Greetings and salutations, folks. My name is Nick, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3, where we're still in Omega. The siege for Omega and uh, Arya's Club Afterlife has taken a lot longer than I expected. It, it's, it's a big mission all on its own. But I feel that we are getting to the end of it. I don't need to aim my weapon. See? Aiming weapons is for suckers. Winners just blindly fire. I was gonna say, I figured that uh, this path with the lit green door was the way forward. But I suppose this one is clearly labeled Central Support, and we are off to stop Cerberus from blowing up this... Uh, at least a huge amount of the station by destroying the Central Support Pillar. Oh, there we go. We're hitting less resistance. I think they're sending forces your way. I can deal. There we go. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Take care of the bomb, Shepard. I'll handle Cerberus. But I can also shoot some Cerberus folks on my way to said bombs. And I've got like four minutes and forty-eight seconds to go. It's plenty of time to shoot one or two Cerberus team members on the way to the bomb. What sidearm did I decide on? Did I keep the, um, I think it was the heavy pistol, just in case I run out of ammo for the Matuk? Because I've been more or less using the Matuk as a one-size-fits-all. Uh, weapon of choice. Get rid of you. All right, man. Yeah, just one more. One and done. They probably should have put more bombs, not placed them in easily reachable areas, not have tried to fight against Commander Shepard. Like, all of these are reasonable things to do. I mean, I understand the the robots deciding that they want to fight me because they're they're, they're robots. They don't understand fear. They they don't. Let's see. Increase damage to barriers and armor. Hmm. Let's go with this one actually. But like, yeah, they don't feel fear. They only know their programming. They'll, they'll throw the, throw their lives away. We're clear. Good. Nyreen, things are under control here. What's your situation? We're advancing to the Gozu district. Move forward. Keep that flank covered. Yes, boss. We're holding our own, but Cerberus has started targeting the civilians. Reports of casualties are coming in from all sectors. Save those you can. 
and head for the rendezvous point. We'll meet you there. We'll do what we can. Nyrene out. So how exactly do we get to Afterlife from here? I'm thinking the straightforward approach for a change. That'll be convenient. I mean, you've already destroyed most of the rest of this of the uh, station. Might as well just add on some more repair costs. Like, imagine if you actually had to do a hacking mini game for every single door. Like, that's what that's the thing that makes Bioshock, uh, like, especially hard to replay. Um, Cerberus. How do you know that? Could be the talent. Never mind. Like, Mass Effect 2 has a heavy amount of hacking minigames, but the hacking minigames are still, at the very least, really fast. Um... There are probably way too many of them next to each other. But they are dealt with in, in, in a pretty quick manner. Whereas, like, Bioshock's hacking takes so long. Like, I've been watching um, uh, Ellen from Outside uh, Extra, uh, her Let's Play of Bioshock. And she's, so she's been playing Bioshock, but I've noticed, like, to deal with the repetitive nature that is, um, the hacking, she's just kind of been fast-forwarding through those hacking sections, uh, so that viewers don't have to see her go through the same pipe dream minigame over and over again. But even without considering, like, how entertaining it is to watch as a viewer, it's still not necessarily entertaining to play as a gamer, even without having to worry about whether an audience is finding it entertaining. So when you enter an area and there are two shops next to each other in Bioshock, you have to hack each one, really, if you want to gain the benefits. Cerberus was the one making the adjutants. See, at this point, like, you know that Cerberus is bad. There's, there, there's bad. But now they've kind of crossed over from just straight up bad to evil. It also kind of shows, like, Elusive Man's progressing uh, madness. Because, like, at the beginning it was reported the idea that humans... Like, they stand for humanity. But that, I would almost argue, is the reaction... Like, everybody reacts to trauma differently. And there's a... I would argue... Let's say, let's say the Elusive Man saw the Reapers as such a threat that he decided that his values for humanity had to go. Are we going to discuss this? Experimenting on adjutants. That explains the ones we saw earlier. Are we going to discuss it further than that? Test adjutants have escaped. They are to be rounded up and transferred to Central HQ's holding area. Post haste. Damage is to be avoided at all costs under penalty of severe combat pay deductions. Well. Extra security. The doors only open one at a time. Makes 
sense considering what they had locked up in here. Doors unlocked. Let's get out of here. Oh, so it's basically just an airlock. That doorway leads to the Gozu district. Look out. No, whoever you were. Sir, I'm I'm busy fighting this big guy. Very rude of you to interrupt. You all right. Anything for me to pick up? I suppose we can take a look and see if there are any fancy items. In this upper floor, there's probably nothing. But there could be something. Probably nothing, though. Okay, there's probably something. 1,500 credits. That can buy something. Also, very nice of the developers for providing a ladder close to where I actually need to be. Solace was here shooting up looters. How do these how do these people get up uh, to the top of ladders before I'm all the way at the top? What is their secret? Do they have the secret teleportation techniques handed down to them from um, from Watson as seen in uh, that Sherlock Holmes game? Though I suppose that makes it easier for the game to keep track of your allies, to just teleport them to the top of the ladder, rather than worry about how much time... ...it takes them to actually catch up with you. And then there's you left. Excellent. We're almost there. There was a shield pylon. The shield pylon did not save you. And again, it's interesting how experience is uh, defined, not by, like, the enemies you defeat, but by specific mission parameters you complete. Dude. Can I go in here? What is in here? Absolutely nothing. If that Talon scout hadn't found us earlier, we'd be dead. Good talking. Hmm. Should I change out my secondary weapon? Instead of the pistol? Like, what will I actually use? Maybe a sniper rifle? Nah, maybe a submachine gun. Do I have more than one? I only have the one submachine gun. You know, I should actually use the submachine gun because at least then I'll have something that's rapid fire. Do I have any new? I don't even have any new. I need to buy a new submachine gun. Nope. That way I have more than one submachine gun. No, 
That's the Mad Prophet from Mass Effect 2. Another shotgun Omniblade, part three, the hit. The hit sequel to Shotgun Omniblades 1 and 2. Oh, hello. I was wondering if you got onto the elevator. Something's not right. Cerberus is still on my station. Of course something's not right. Not what I was talking about. I'm checking this out. Going radio silent. What the hell is she doing? But she's still going to be talking the entire time. She's going radio silent. But she's not actually going completely silent. She's just going to provide commentary for her own actions. We just Don't talked about that Don't in the elevator. Shepard, aren't you paying attention to the she's conversation? To Our weapons are useless! Does Nyrene kill herself to destroy the adjutants? And somehow the Cerberus armor survives. Unscathed. That's it. Finally she lets loose. Okay, but don't kill me. Petrosky dies now. I can deal with that. Nyrene Kandros was a good soldier. It's a shame she had to die for your petty ambitions. You're a dead man. No, wait! What now, Petrovsky? Divide and conquer, Commander. Kandros killed the adjutants we hadn't finished experimenting on. They are fully under our control. The prototypes for our future army. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay, where are these? Oh. Okay, so I have to... Override console. Shield generator. Do I really need to worry about uh, Arya's health? Override console. Shield generator. Override console. Okay. 
There we go. Alright. I'll use the Maddock on you. And is... nope. There's Petrovsky. All safe up top. Now, who is shooting at me? With guns and bullets. Assault Trooper! I will get you! You have been defeated, Assault Trooper! Alright, who's left? Is there anybody left? Oh, I see you. Way over there. Ooh. Cease and desist all aggression. It's over. Was he playing against somebody? And the virtual side of the chessboard? Was the other player? Oh, is he hoping that he's going to be able to provide intelligence? You'll say anything to save your skin. I, I'll let you escape, Omega. I deserve mercy. Is this true, Arya? Yes. Cerberus had successfully taken the station and he let me go. Do you feel that, Oleg? That's death. Only inches away. Remember this feeling. and for the war against your master. You better cooperate. And the entire time I do, I will talk to you in a very low tone of voice that's hard to hear. You and your alliance can decide his fate. Just get this filth off my station. Okay. Commander. Can do. Glad to see you've had a calming effect on Ms. Taloke. I tried talking sense into her one time. I look forward to hearing how you pulled it off. Don't assume you know where this is going. What? From what I understand, high-ranking Alliance POWs lead fairly comfortable lives. Who knows? You and I may even become friends. That's not happening. Bray, get him out of here. All right, so now that you've reclaimed Omega, what are you going to do next? I've been waiting to kill that man for months. Walk around with you for a few hours and I go all soft. You're like a disease. This victory came at a cost, Arya. It's not soft to recognize that. You sound like someone trying to sell something. I admire your tenacity. And thanks to you, I have Omega back. All right, what now? So what's your plan? There's a lot to rebuild. 
Starting with this. Command center. It may take some time to remove the general stink from my throne. Wonder if I'll ever really enjoy the pole dancing in here again. If you believe in dreams and such, anything is possible. The citizens of Omega have been through a lot, Arya. Try to remember that. How can I forget? There are reminders everywhere I look. And don't worry. I'll honor our arrangement. Troops, ships, and a mountain of Izo. You earned it. Then I'll be going. Bray will take you back. I have a station to whip into shape. All right. Citizens of Omega, hear me. I, Arya Talok, have given you back your lives. Myself, just me, My nobody else. Reignited. No, nobody I helped me. Controls once more, and I will not let go again. Each of you owes a debt. Gain my favor by rounding up the remaining Cerberus invaders and... And we will cast them from our home. Then bury and mourn our dead. My methods haven't always been popular, and I can't promise that will change. But securing this station and everyone inside it is now my primary purpose. No one will imprison us again. We may be bruised. We may be bloodied. You may be standing next to the corpse of your best friend. Omega. You always get these crap details, Bray? <laughs> Not this time. You got a galaxy to save. Let's get you off this rock. At least Bray know what's, knows what's going on. He, he knows there's a bigger picture. Ah, oh, thank you, trainer. From Caden Lenko. Hey, Shepard, still in the hospital, but I'm up on my feet eating solid food and making trouble for the nurses. They'll probably throw me out of here soon. Come by if you're on the Citadel. Same room. Shepard, I had Pet Petrovsky's chessboard sent to the Normandy. It just doesn't go with the new decor I have planned for afterlife. Arya. Thanks, I'm... I'm glad I have the memento. Well, now that that is done, shall we go back to the Citadel and talk to Caden? We haven't even talked to Dr. Bryson. I don't even remember what, what... I've spent so long trying to save Omega, I don't even remember what Dr. Bryson wants. Uh, we're going to go to the hospital. Yes, Commander. All right, let us go talk to. Can we buy something? Yeah, why not? I haven't used any Metagel yet, but again. Why not? I should consider going to the Presidium uh, Commons and seeing if I can buy a submachine gun. Oh, hello. Yulenko! You look less beefy when you're in your uniform. Hey, Shepard. If you came to spring me, you're late. I'm getting out soon. Good to hear. Maybe you already saw the vid, but I accepted Udina's offer. I'm not aware. Dr. Caden Malenko. That's a big deal. Only the second human specter. <laughs> it's humbling. Udina thinks they may have a pretty big ceremony, even with the war. And he says a celebration will give folks something hopeful to latch onto. You ready to take on that responsibility? You set the bar pretty high, but I'll do my best. It's strange. On Mars, 
I should have died. The promotion from Anderson, Spectre status. These are terrible days. But I've been lucky. You're perfect for the job. On Eden Prime, I could see there was something special about you. You're a good soldier. That means a lot. I'm happy. I want to serve. I thought you might want to join the Normandy. Yeah. I have thought about that. I just need to get out of here first, though. Take care of some things. I've been trying to locate my old spec op squads. My students from Biotics Division. Any luck? No. Probably went underground, but they'll turn up. If they were easy to find, they wouldn't be doing their jobs. Well, let me know when you're out. Take care, Spectre Lenko. Stay safe, Commander. Now, that's something I find interesting about Mass Effect 3. Um, more so than any game like this. Because it presents the idea that characters actually have their own lives, their own uh, motivations to chase down. Uh, one of the, like, you could say one of the issues with, a, like, Mass Effect 1 and 2 is you recruit a, a character, and they're in your squad, and then they have nothing going on for them. Zilch. Zip. Nada. Now, usually, most of the time, uh, a lot of these characters have pressing concerns when they join your crew. Uh, with Mass Effect 2, they have the realization that they are joining... Um, oh, weapons are on that side. Uh, that they're joining a group that's about to tackle an impossible mission. A suicide mission, so to speak. Probably nobody's going to come back from it alive. Um, so they know they don't necessarily need to leave the ship to go do something else. But that I would imagine that does provide certain amounts of variety to the gameplay. If you also have to worry about like who's in your actually available in your party, who's not in your party because they went off to do their own thing. Let's see. Do we have any SMGs? They just have a shotgun. An advisor. Whereas like Mass Effect 3, you have like a central group who joins you. Oh, is this a SMG? It looks kind of cool. Hmm. Shoot smart. Shoot no Sastra. You want me to shoot you? Your company? Our selections include rare technology upgrades from the Terminus systems. Well, let's grab that. And that. Our selections include rare technology upgrades from the terminus systems. And that. Thank you for shopping at Nosostra Sporting Goods. Alright, now I've got a new submachine gun. Fantastic. Alright, I'm just going to cut to my arrival to Dr. Bryson's lab. Alright, let's head over to Dr. Bryson's lab, see what's going on there. Um, I don't know if the submachine gun I bought is any good, but... I can try it out, and as well, at least I have the Matuck as kind of like a go-to. Contact the field teams for a progress report. Yes, sir. Oh, Commander Shepard, we've been expecting you. Just a moment. And Hadley, could you gather the Leviathan data for us? Oh, is this the um? My team is out investigating leads right now. Is this the Here DLC? Right, and this is Task Force Aurora. What's your assignment? Our mandate is to investigate legends, rumors old stories about the Reapers before anyone knew they existed. That's an interesting goal, but is anyone doubting the Reapers exist these days? The Alliance is still desperate for intelligence. Reaper motives, their operational tactics. Anything that can give us an edge. And how did you wind up in charge? 
When the rest of the galaxy says something doesn't exist, I take that as a chance to prove that it does. So you're in it for the challenge? For the truth. Even as late as 2148, humanity still thought aliens were a myth. That was within my lifetime. Once that myth was proven to be reality, our entire history changed. Reapers were part of that reality, too. But even they have a history, Commander. If we could just uncover it, there may be a weakness we can exploit. I could have used your help three years ago. Yes. If people had paid more attention to your Prothean beacon, we might not be in this war. But now with mm. the information we've uncovered, a breakthrough... We might have been better off, more than anything else. Hadley, do you have the data? Hadley has been indoctrinated! No. I need CSEC at my location, now! You shouldn't be here. The darkness can't be breached. Transit records show his name is Derek Hadley. He's worked here for a couple months. Shepard, I monitored a CSEC alert from this location. Were you harmed? Uh, no. Fine, but I could use your help sorting this out, Edie. Take a look through their files. I need to know what this task force was up to. At once. What? I... What's happening? You tell me. I... I was gathering our data when you arrived, and then... It was dark. Cold. Like... I was someplace else. And like nothing says... I don't know! A gun was in my hand. Dr. Bryson, there was... A loud noise. That was you shooting him. Nothing says Mass Effect characters more than uh, folded arms. Like, like once a character like leans back, folds their arms, like that, that feels like the quintessential Mass Effect character animation. Then what happened here? So someone else pulled that trigger. But I would never do that, Commander. This does resemble reports of indoctrination. Indoctrination? Me? What about that Leviathan Bryson mentioned? How does that tie in? It's some kind of creature. Our field teams have been tracking it. That artifact came in from our researcher, Garneau. He sent an audio log if you want to... What's wrong? Turn back. What are you talking about? The darkness cannot be breached. Get him over to the clinic. See if they can tell us what's wrong with him. Yes, ma'am. Commander, you'll want to see this. It's an outgoing message from Dr. Bryson to Admiral Hackett. All right. Dr. Bryson, you have an update? Admiral, the Leviathan of Dis that we've been investigating, I think we're really onto something. Give me the brief. About 20 years ago, the Batarians discovered a Reaper corpse that had died in battle. They covered it up and denied it ever existed. But I'm intrigued by the larger implication. What could have killed the Reaper in the first place? Exactly. That's the real Leviathan. It's worth pursuing. Continue your investigation and update me on the progress. There is also a follow-up message from a few weeks later. Admiral, the Reapers are shadowing my field teams as if they're hunting Leviathan themselves. Whatever it is, I believe Leviathan is nothing less than a Reaper killer. Almost an apex predator, and it has them nervous. If we could just find it, imagine the impact on the war. I'm formally requesting assistance in tracking it down. You'll have it. It's well, your top if I remember correctly, it does have impact on the war by providing um, some war resources. The Reaper could do a lot of collateral damage. Yet, given the state of this conflict, I believe the saying. The enemy of my enemy is my friend may be relevant. But we won't know unless we can find it. Bryson's assistant did say they recently received a log from their field researcher. It may yield more information. Um, there's also a bit in this in this specific DLC that um that I would like to incorporate into like my own video game if I was to ever develop it. The entire idea of exploring underwater territories. Which, to be fair, I should probably play Subnautica first.
if I'm going to worry about that. This must be the artifact the assistant mentioned. And here's the log. As that is th probably the biggest. I'm sending you an artifact I found. About the only thing I found there, in fact. Maybe it's nothing, but I swear Leviathan came through here. I'm going to crunch some numbers. Burn off the rest of this project travel allowance. Maybe I can project our Reaper killer's movements. I'll check in when I get to the next site. Garno appears to be our best lead to track Leviathan, but he does not stay to destination. Let's focus on what he does say, then. He mentioned extrapolating Leviathan's path and crunching numbers. He wasn't flying blind. He had data. A significant amount of And data. all we have is lore. Office. So <laughs> how do we narrow it down? Bryson and his colleagues evidently used a galaxy map search program in their hunt for Leviathan. It may help us locate Garneau. All right. Does this tell us where Garneau went? No. But we may be able to narrow down his location if we find clues he was using in his search for Leviathan. Well. Mm. <laughs> of course you need string to connect all the dots. These are all murders in which the accused lacked a known motive and claimed memory loss. Just like Bryson's assistant. You think Garneau was following a trail of blackout crimes? It is possible. We need to find data matching dates and locations for crimes of this nature. All right. Here's the time and date chart for the crimes. Can you filter for murders where the killer claimed memory loss? Adding the search filter, you may examine the results on the galaxy map program. All right. How does that change things? No results. Some of our search parameters may be irrelevant. All right. Hmm. Let us continue the exploration. Sir, this is Bryson. We know the Reapers are after Leviathan. Studying Reaper hunting patterns could be vital to finding it. That data is classified top secret, Dr. Bryson. If it falls into the wrong hands. It won't. The data is encrypted. I'll keep the decryption key safe. Close to my heart. Close to his heart. What the hell does that mean? That means it's physically close to his heart. The Reaper fleet activity is encrypted, per Bryson's statement in the law. He said he was keeping the decryption key close to his heart. Sovereign. Vanguard of our destruction. How's that working out? Or there's... Guy? There's a picture of his wife or something somewhere in this apartment because I'm pretty sure they moved his body so there's probably like a picture of his wife or his kid oh look there's a SMG uh oh there's there's some rocks meteorite fragment maybe he was studying it as an object of importance we should look more closely at a sample Meteorite sample. With traces of element zero. Would Leviathan need Ezo? While it is not consumed as fuel during FTL travel, element zero will decay after several centuries of active use. If Leviathan is old enough, it would need to replenish its supplies. Okay. Can you give me a search filter for locations with element zero? Adding this search filter to the galaxy map. All right. But I probably still need to find things. The Thorian, a life form discovered on Pharos, provides fascinating insight into the life cycle of a truly alien species. Unlike conventionally intelligent life, it does not use mass relays. Prothean artifacts would not interest it. Commander Shepard claims that Reaper enemies cultivated life to evolve along lines they could predict, using technology the Reapers controlled. The Thorian is an exception to that rule. It evolved to use organic tools rather than conventional technology. Leviathan must somehow s must be somehow similar to have survived undetected for so long. The Thorian used pain conditioning to control its victims, using them as manual labor, or even as a man would use his own hands and fingers. Commander Shepard claims that Reapers do the same thing through a different process called indoctrination. Whatever Leviathan is, it must be doing something similar. 
Tyson was tracking unexplained creature sightings. The photographs have a trace chemical residue. It may be visible under another light source. Bryson was not merely tracking sightings. He was attempting to extrapolate a course. And Garneau could have been following that course. Edie, can you add a search filter for systems along that projected path? Adding the search filter now. How many search filters can we have going at the same time? Looks like data on the Rachni. Looks like data on the Rachni. By Anne Bryson, age nine. Records indicate Anne is now 28. She works for the Alliance. Bryson was... By Anne Bryson, age nine. Records indicate Anne is now 28. She works for the Alliance. Bryson was keeping the encryption key close to his heart. What's closer than family? An interesting hypothesis. But I detect no trace of the decryption key in this... art. March 7th, 2186. I'm looking at the Rachni. Their movements during the Rachni Wars suggest alien influence. But the timing is wrong. And Rachni weren't implanted with Reaper tech. What if Leviathan was preparing the Rachni to fight the Reapers? What do you think, Edie? It is possible that Bryson's team is using ancient Rachni fleet activity to find Leviathan. We saw a data pad containing data on Rachni movements earlier. It may be relevant. Yeah, it was right over here. The Rachni data. Can you add a cross-reference for locations of sightings? Adding it now. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to stop here for the night. Got any suggestions for something to play next? Leave it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a good night.